Being a nine o'clock with an eleven o'clock kickoff today. Just remember that you are privileged. Okay. A couple announcements that I do have. First of all, the uh, we have two weeks left in order to purchase tickets for our quilt. If you would like to get those, they'll be on sale out there at that table. Um, we appreciate everybody who's been able to help us out with that. Also, um, we have uh, some encouraging numbers in our county with our with our COVID. Uh, numbers and so we are going to try again on September 29th will be the first choir rehearsal and um, we will resume choir and uh, hopefully Sunday fellowship after worship on October 3rd so we might need some people to sign up for that out there I forgot to check the list before I came in so if you could do that that would be awesome um, then we're going to do something a little different also this year for the community covered every other week we are going to, uh, or every other, sorry, every other month, we're going to have uh, something special that we're going to ask you to bring. And so for the month of October, we're asking that you bring chunky soup and crackers um, to put in our basket out there, and I'll keep reminding you of that. Also, um, Chris Brown wanted me to let you know that she has signs in her trunk. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Um, prayer request, Brad Rambert, Rambert, I'm sorry, Brad Rambert, uh, who is related to uh, Becky Wright. Prayers for um, them. Also, um, many of you remember Bob Guff. He preached here several times. Um, Bob entered Life Triumphant uh, very unexpectedly Thursday. And um, his service will be Friday, uh, 4 o'clock in Fort Collins at Harmony Presbyterian Church. If you would like to participate in the online service it'll be live on on YouTube um, I will send the link to that um, with the weekly email blast and today is a very special day for mr. Doug oh jeez. Oh, geez. <laughs> 60 maestro happy birthday to you happy birthday
take the path that they follow or sit in the seat of people who can't follow others. Their delight is in the law of the Lord, and they meditate on God's law day and night. The Lord watches over the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. Please join in the prayer. God of the first and the last, give us strength of mind that we might walk in the paths of obedience and discipleship without wasting our time thinking about who is more important. Instead, guide our thoughts and our emotions that we may be like children, totally dependent on you, welcoming all with hearts and love. Amen. Our opening hymn is Come Thou Almighty King, number two. God's people say, Amen. Amen. The God who loves and sustains you, here's your plea. The Lord desires for you a welcome into the blessed community of freedom and light. You are forgiven.
God is good all the time. All the time, God is good. Friends, let us share with one another as we pass the peace, waving to one another from where we are. Peace be with you. Stay humble and 
Today's gospel lesson is from Mark chapter 9, verses 30 through 37. Listen for the word of the Lord. They went on from there and passed through Galilee. He did not want anyone to know it. For he was teaching his disciples, saying to them, The Son of Man is to be betrayed into human hands, and they will kill him. And three days after being killed, he will rise again. But they did not understand what he was saying and were afraid to ask him. Then they came to Capernaum, and when he was in the house, he asked them, Why were, What were you arguing about on the way? But they were silent, for on the way they had argued with one another who was the greatest. He sat down and he called the twelve and he said to them, Whoever wants to be first must be last of all and servant of all. Then he took a little child and put it among them, and taking it in his arms, he said to them, Whoever welcomes one such child in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me, not me, but the one, who sent me. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. There's a columnist for the Los Angeles Times. Her name is Virginia Heffernan. And she wrote an op-ed piece back in February. It was entitled, What Can You Do About the Trumpites Next Door? In this opinion article, she reveals that she is quite liberal and has become quite upset about the neighbor next door who refuses to take that damn Trump sign down. But then, this person lives next to her mountain cabin, and what would you know but one day in February, it snows a lot. And this Trumpite has the gall and the audacity to come over and clear her driveway for her. She laments the fact that she is now going to have to be nice to the guy. She should probably start waving when they see each other on the street, because that would be the neighborly thing to do. And maybe she should even take a nice big plate of cookies over to the family. But man, it's going to be hard to be nice to this guy, who is so different from her. She writes... On January 6th, after the insurrection, Senator Ben Sasse, a Republican of Nebraska, issued an aw shucks plea for all Americans to love their neighbors. The United States, he said, isn't Hatfields and McCoys, this blood feud forever. And he added, you can't hate someone who shovels your driveway. And she agrees. Maybe we can be friends with people we don't see eye to eye with as long as we don't have to get too friendly. We like to think that partisan politics is a major divide in our country. And if we allow the media to represent it, it is. It's a huge divide. Yet the divide occurs only when we allow ourselves to be pigeonholed into that divide and the human demand to be better than everyone else. Our scripture today is very interesting in the way that humanity tries to win the day, but Jesus reminds us that being a Christian is more than being great. Now, the first part of this chapter of the reading that I began with, we started at verse 30. So there's 29 verses that were left out of this chapter that we didn't read last week. And something real big happens here. Jesus goes up on this mountain. And while he's up on this mountain, he takes Peter, James, and John with him, and he becomes transfigured. And he has a party with Elijah and with Moses, and they chill for a while up there. Peter freaks out, doesn't know what to do, wants to build him a booth, and all of a sudden, he wakes up, looks around, and everybody's gone, and Jesus says, shh, don't tell anyone what you saw. And then the story picks up today. So they're cruising along, walking down the road, and Jesus says, you know what? I got some bad stuff that's going to happen. I'm going to have to go to Jerusalem, and they're going to kill me, but I'm going to be raised again in three days. It's ugly business. And so Jesus continues walking, and the disciples begin to hang back a little bit. And when they get to Capernaum, Jesus asks them what they were talking about. Well, they're guilty of arguing, and they don't want to tell Jesus about it because the argument is over who amongst them is the greatest. 
And that's why we have to have that little bit of backstory because we know for sure that the greatest has to be Peter because he spoke and James and John because they got to chill with him. And everybody else is second class citizens, right? And that's what the argument was about. Because the old tax collectors, I mean, holy cow, they, they want a piece of the action too. They're used to getting it forever, right? How can these three think they're better than everybody else? Fishermen, tax collectors, everybody wants to try and try to get a piece of Jesus. But you see, they can't all be the one because, well, some voted for Trump and some voted for Biden. I mean, some, some were for the Roman occupation and some were not. Each one believes that they are righteous and they acquire this indignation for those whom they believe are different. And then Jesus gives them one of them patented zingers, you know. Anyone who wants to be first must be the very last and the servant of all. Plow the snow out of the driveway and accept the gift that the snow has been plowed. A willingness to serve one another is well and good, but we also have to be willing to be on the other end of that service every once in a while as well. If we never accept from our friends and our neighbors, then we're constantly in the state of mind as being superior because we're the ones who serve. You see how easy that righteous indignation occurs? We're the 12 that get to hang out with Jesus. We're the three that get to go up on the mountain. We're the ones who continue to serve and nobody needs to serve me. And to demonstrate all of this, Jesus then does something crazy. He takes a child among him and he says, whoever welcomes one of these little children in my name welcomes me. And whoever welcomes me does not welcome me, but the one who sent me. Think about how we welcome the children in our lives. It would be nice if they didn't have to go underground for this hour. But they do, and it works out okay. But we know that kids cannot take care of themselves. They need to be fed, they need to be cleaned, and they need to be clothed. We have to put limits on their playtime and their rest time so that they can be healthy, or else they cry all the time because they're grouchy kids. The adult, in essence, becomes a servant to the child. And the child in ancient times also was the lowest form on the human ladder of life. By welcoming a child, it meant that you would do anything to make sure that that child became an adult. This required patience, a willingness to stay the course, and of course money. If we welcome a child, we welcome Jesus, and in turn, God, the creator of all life. But we can't just leave it at that. We have to go back and we have to look at Psalm 1 and remind ourselves that it's the division of life lived in one of two ways, either the righteous or the wicked, and that is not based on politics. Psalm 1 is not a description of what our political views should be. Rather, the psalm is a meditation on what happiness is. The first word in the psalm is happy, or depending upon the, some translations, it's blessed. You know them whole beatitude things that are in, in Matthew? Yeah, blessed are this and blessed are that. Well, the other word is happy for it. The underlying thought in Psalm 1 is that truly blessed folks have values that are God-centered, where those who are, who are not blessed are self-centered. Hmm, think about that for a second. Those who are not blessed by God are self-centered. Ooh, that's a slap. Happiness comes not from enjoying oneself, but from delighting in the teaching of the Lord. Psalm 1 also uses the word way, as in the way of righteousness and the way of the wicked. It tells us that the psalm is not political, or social action, but it's a course of life. The Hebrew word underlying way is a derrick, which refers to a path worn constantly by walking. So delighting in the teaching of the Lord is not an occasional meander, but a chosen route for one's journey through life. 
for us that way may coincide from time to time with how we vote or what social programs we support but it is not synonymous with either of those things so we need to exercise caution in assuming our fellow Americans who make different decisions about politics or social issues are on the wrong course or worse or even vile because they might own a show and they might shovel your driveway when the snow falls because you see, the judgment is up to God. It truly is a conundrum whether to be excited or happy when we get our snow plow, depending upon who does the plowing. But if we're willing to walk the path over and over that God calls us to, we will learn that we can receive the gift of God's grace, and we can receive the care and the compassion. With glad and generous hearts, let us return to God a portion of all that we've been given. Let us present our tithes and our offerings to our God.
and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Our closing hymn is number 346, For the Healing of the Nations. We'll sing verses 1 and 4. Thank mm -hmm. you. 